Hey everyone. Eek. It's Rita for Miss Rita to the Rescue. Here for Cricket Chat this morning. Um, starting off a week of freebies. That's what we're gonna do this week. We're gonna do all freebies from um, outside of the Cricut Design Space app, but they don't cost um, you anything and they're all going to be autumnal or autumn. Um, and so let's get started after I greet my friends. And let me say um, welcome this morning. If you're new, definitely say hello and let us know where you're uh, tuning in from. Uh, my name is Rita Cavicchio, and this is my webpage, Miss Rita to the Rescue. I do have a YouTube page, and I would encourage you to um, subscribe to that YouTube channel, which can easily be found just by searching for Miss Rita to the Rescue and hit that subscribe button. Um, I'm trying to reach a goal. I'm trying to reach um, 8,000 followers, and so I'm trying to hit that. But also, the great thing about it is that there are literally hundreds and hundreds of videos, just like the one you're watching now, that were recorded live that go over just about everything you can think of that you can do with a Cricut machine. And that's what I, I do. I'm a Cricut product expert. I'm primarily a paper crafter, but I do also um, do vinyl and iron-on and 3D projects and all kinds of Things. So if you tune in or if you watch the replay, then you're going to learn a lot. And um, maybe not every project's for you, but I guarantee there'll be something for you. Good morning, Eileen. Hello, Lisa. Okay, Lisa, I got a couple people going to be sending you cards. Um, and I'm so sorry to hear that you're in the hospital still. Hi, Dorothy. Hi, Diane. Diane Woods and Lynn, thank you for sharing. Sharing is so important um, to, uh, from what I gather, sharing is so important. Um, I'm a Generation X person, so I'm kind of late in the game on this, but um, I don't do all the stuff that all those millennials do. But we have a lovely, vibrant community here um, it, at, on Cricket Chat, and then we have a Cricket Date Night on Saturday night. So so um, if you're looking for a group of people that share a common interest, which is cricket, then you have found us. You have found us and um, everyone here will make you feel welcome and uh, so glad to have you with us. So so this morning, um, and as I mentioned, you know, I'm primarily, primarily a paper crafter and primarily I do things from cricket design space and I do work with with Cricut Design Space exclusively. I know there are other programs out there, um, but I'm a Cricut gal. So I do everything with Cricut and Cricut Design Space. But the great thing about Cricut is that you can bring other people's designs into Design Space and cut them with your Cricut. And this is just one of many many examples that I want to show you this morning um, that is a pumpkin. Isn't that adorable? It's like kind of 3D and it's a box and I've actually cut it out with some uh... <coughs> nope sorry guys guys <coughs> Oh, sorry that they're barking, but I cut it out with um, solid colors, but I, my example that I have is with uh, patterned paper, and I'm going to show you how to find this and download this, as well as we're going to, later on in the week, we're going to be doing um, freebies from... Let's see, Leah Griffith. I don't know if you know who she is, but she's well known for making flowers with cray paper. So beautiful. We're also going to be doing something from that's free from Laurie Whitlock. We're going to do something free from um, SVG Cuts. Uh, there's also a couple other places, 
Burden Avenue. Um, let's see, I'm just looking at my list. There's also another one called Simply Crafty SVGs and um, a couple of other places that I'm going to give you the list of where to find these. And they have, you know, it, it does range in how many they have, but pretty much they all offer some SVGs that we could work with and bring into design space. So this one here is the pumpkin. Now, why does why do the designers do this? Well, in this particular case, this is a dreaming tree. This is the pumpkin. Now, what they do is they create this thing called um, a free gift. And they come out with it, I'd say, every three weeks, maybe a little more frequently in the fall in, in the Christmas area. But they come out with a free gift that has three really intricate, um, really beautiful images. Um, that it's a bundle, okay? And if you want to see all the bundles, if you ever want to see all the bundles that they have um, here, you can actually look um, in their main shop on their categories. You can go to bundles and it will show you all the bundles and there's something for every season and all kinds of uh, occasion. So what they do is they introduce a new bundle and you can get it for free if you purchase some of their old bundles or old images. Um, so that's what this one is. It's called Autumn in the Air SVG bundle. And you, have, you get these three, which includes a sunflower, which, oh my gosh, I'm so loving. And um, so it, one of the things that, that they're very generous about is that they give you these free SVGs. And personally, I think it's because... Um, they their SVGs can be pretty intricate and sometimes take a while to put together. These ones here don't look that challenging compared to some of the other things they have. And so they offer all of these wonderful SVGs here. And it's in the second category, second category, second tab, free SVG files. And there, I think I added them up last time. There's like over a hundred here and there's lots of cards. There's some lumen, luminary tea light holders like this. Um, there's some 3D things that are, that are very specific. Look at this luminary, this tea light. Um, this another tea light. And there's just some really cute things here, cards. I've done this bushel basket. It's awesome. It looks great on a desk. Um, like if you, you have a little desk at work or maybe a reception area, whatever, with a little couple treats in there, whatever. But these are all free and you can download them all if you want to. Hi, Wendy. Um, hi, Dorothy. Oh, okay. So, sorry. Hi, Babs. How are you? Um, you can download all of them or just one of them. And this particular one, this pumpkin one, is here. You do have to look because there's, there's quite a few here. But it, you can either type in pumpkin or you can scroll and there it is. Okay. Now, um... I would advise, if you've never purchased and done one of the Dreaming Tree files, I would advise that you do one or more of the free SVGs first because they teach you different things things as you're going along that make their other images or their other projects so much easier. Now, as their name suggests, their their name is Dreaming Tree, but you can find them at 3dsvg.com. I'm going to put a, uh, it's actually an affiliate uh, code in the description of this video. So if you're watching on the replay, look at the description of the video and you can click through and it doesn't cost you any more to use my affiliate link. But if you buy anything, I get a very small percentage back. Um, so, it, and use it okay. Use it if you want to do free SVG as well. So, but my feeling is learn the free SVGs. There's a lot of really great ones and it gets you in the, um, in the mood or in the, you know, design set. I don't know. Um, you learn things, you learn things from their files. And this is one of their files and I want to show you how it goes. So if I were you and I was coming here, I would 
go and uh, set up an account, um, which I already have here, right? And I'm logged in. I would browse through the SVG files and look at all the different ones. Like, look at this one, a milk treat box. How cute is that? And then there's the sand, sun, and sea card. I mean, so cute, right? And <laughs> I don't know, you could put anything in there, right? Or you could just have it as a decoration. So you would just put these things into your cart and just keep going back. And you like I said, you could put all of them in there if you wanted to. I wouldn't overwhelm yourself by doing that, but um, you could if you wanted to. Just add it to your cart, and then when you go to the cart, you'll see that there's zero, okay? And all you need to do, as long as you have an account, is proceed to the checkout. And once you have done that and place your order, you will come to this screen, which is like has these big blue boxes on it, okay? Um, and so just waiting a second for that to happen. Um, I might, might be having some small, okay, there we go. So there, this bluish gray box, it says free SVG. You're gonna click on that, okay? And when you click on it, it might do something different on your computer, but on my computer, it goes directly into my downloads file and it unzips. Now, a lot of these SVGs come as zipped files. Now, if you have a Macintosh, they usually unzip them for you automatically. Um, but if you have a Windows-based system, you may need to install a zip unzip tool, which are free and you can get on your computer. But um, you would just click on these and you might see it goes down into, like this little thing goes down into, um, down the bottom of my screen. So I go to um, my downloads and look at all the downloads that I have, okay? But um, I just have a ton of downloads here and I just usually just check to see that it downloads, okay? Um, and yeah, instructions. So here's the thing about um, 3D SVG. They do do, the guy that um, runs the company's name is Leo Kowal and he does some really great videos on how to put them together they're kind of long and if you're you know press for time, you can get a little, you know, it can get a little bit like, oh my God, it's taking so long. So, um, but I've watched him. He's very pleasant and um, he's very, very, uh, very good at putting things together. But for me, I don't know if it's my ADD or what. I'm just like, oh, hurry up, Leo. <laughs> you know. So sometimes I do fast forward through them. Um, and so there are videos. And in addition, they do also have, let me show you, I'm going to open up that pumpkin treat box. So when I look at this pumpkin treat box, uh, you get an image, which is this this thing under JPEG. So you can see and refer to the image. If you click on it, it will open up the image. Look, there's my image. And then you also get a PDF. Let's open that. And these are description, um, printed description. And so it will tell you how many pieces of paper in this particular uh, treat box really only requires eight and a half by 11 inch paper, which um, we all buy, you know, at Michael's that they're 11 and a half by eight and a half, eight and a half by 11 um, inch paper is great. Um, they have this time of year, they have the spice market grouping. Let me show show you it. Uh, I love this uh, grouping of papers. It's called uh, Spice Market. It's from Michael's. Where does it say Spice Market? Right there. Spice Market. It's 50 sheets and it's all autumn colors. Look at that. So we're going to be doing sunflowers and look at these pumpkin and uh, even brown. Brown's hard to come by, believe it or not. 
Um, I use a lot of brown in the fall and even some in the winter. Um, so this is a great pack of paper. This I purchased at Michael's and this uh, retail value is like five or six dollars, 50 sheets of paper. It's a great buy, but even greater buy when you find it on sale. A lot of times they'll sell it so that you can get them for like two or three dollars for a pack and um, definitely worth looking for at Michael's in their paper section. Okay, so that's what we're gonna use, eight and a half by 11 inch paper from Michaels to cut this out. And let me show you, we're gonna go to our Cricut Design Space. I'm gonna do new because we're starting from scratch. Um, and we are going to upload. Now this is the main difference between working with Cricut Design Space and working with an outside designer, okay? Um, in Cricut Design Space, um, you would go and look for projects or images using this projects or this images. But when you're bringing in an outside SVG, you have to upload the pieces of the image of the total design. Let me show you. And so we're going to go to upload and we're going to use, now there are two things here. Just ignore this right hand side thing. It's totally different than what we're doing. We're working on image. We're going to go to upload image and now we're going to browse. So when we browse, we're going to look in that downloads file where all of our files came in. Okay. And here it is, pumpkin treat box. Okay, and there's our JPEG and our PDF. We don't want those. We're looking for the SVG files. Now, the way that Dreaming Tree does their files is they separate them by color. So in this particular case, right, we have orange, we have brown, we have two kinds of green, and then we have the box. So we have five different SVGs, so we have to click on each one, open it, and then save it. And we go through this and we add them all and you'll see them sort of pile up here in your, this is kind of like a library of your uploaded images. You haven't yet created a project. You don't have like a, a project together yet, but you have upload, in this case, I did this and I, I um, already did this. So what I'm gonna do once I have all of the images that I need, which there's five of them, I'm going to just click on each one like this. And then I'm going to go down here to the bottom where it says insert images. And then it will bring you to your canvas, a blank canvas. If you started as new, it will bring you to a blank canvas. Now I'm gonna um, make some modifications to my file because I wanna change things up a little bit. But here are our five pieces. Now this comes in as black, but so you cannot see, but there are actually dashed cut lines that are on this file. So here is what this looks like, and I'll show you this side because it's easier to see. But when you put this through your machine, as long as you um, don't make any changes to it, you won't require. It doesn't require a scoring wheel or the scoring stylus. This dash cut line is what's going to create your score. That makes these free files so. Um, easy to use with the Joy because the Joy doesn't do scoring. Um, but if you have a scoring wheel and you want to use the scoring wheel or a scoring stylus, you can make a change and um, and do that. But frankly, I like it this way. I don't know. I, it, having to put in something in my machine just makes it a little bit harder. Um, and so, but you cannot see it. So I'm gonna change the color on this so that you can see it. I'm going up here to change the color. I'm gonna change it to white just so you can see it. So here's white and you see it has these dashed cut lines cross that's going to make our box, okay? Um, and, but the thing is that this is two separate mats right now. It's two separate cuts. How do I know that? When I look over here to my layers, I see cut and it's sort of like, it looks 
like there's nothing there and then there's cut and it looks like our box. These two things have to be put together and you do that by attaching them together. If you were to cut this um, right now, and I'll, I could show you what would happen. It would come across without the cut lines, and then you'd get an entirely different um, mat with the cut lines on it. So you don't want that. So what you want to do is just click on this and attach. This is the case for all the designers that are working outside of Cricut Design Space. Apparently, they don't have the ability to indicate a line as being a scored line or um, any other kind of like solid line or anything like that. So they have to put it in as a cut line and they can't attach them. So we have to do that attaching for ourselves and that's what we're gonna do. So we're attaching that and now when you go, it's together. See that? It's together. So that's pretty cool. Now, a couple of things that I um, want to point out here that I do. Now, when you look at this, let me just see if I can find the image. Where's our image of it? Uh, back, back, back. Let's go to free files. Let's do pumpkin. When you look at this file, you'll notice that he has here we go. Here's a pumpkin. He has a lot of Halloween stuff. So if you like pumpkin Halloween stuff, then that's for you. But when you look at his image, you'll notice he has some embossing. And then over here, he has um, inked his, his pieces. But I don't do inking. Inking is a... Um, I probably should... And I have done it before, but to be honest, uh, my craft room is such a mess, I can never find my ink pads. So um, what he's doing there is creating a little bit of a lift by making these three, because see that? It's like a sandwich, right? So he's kind of giving it a different look so you can see the roundness of the pumpkin. Hi, Susan. Hi, Serena. Um, and what I have done is I have actually cut this out in three different color pumpkins instead of inking. This is another technique you could use. And also we both, I think, used these um, pop dots, which I'll show you how to do as well. He's also used something called an embossing folder. Again, I have embossing folders and I can show you how to do that in the future, but um, but I generally don't have it in, in my craft studio. Um, I really need to move all that stuff up there, but boy, I just need a few days to do that, I guess. But anyway, so instead of inking, we're going to cut this out into three different colors. So let's go back. Okay, so what we want to do to cut this out into different colors is we want to duplicate it twice. So here we go. We're going to go over to here and do duplicate once, twice, okay? What we're gonna do is be isolating these pumpkins into separate images, because right now it came up as one color, one image, okay? And we don't want that. We want instead, because if you look over here, it's one image, right? All three pumpkins, one image. We cannot separate it because there's, there is nothing to separate. It came across that way. So what we're going to do is we're going to contour them away. So what is contour? Contour is a way to get rid of certain pieces of one design. Um, you can only work it on a simple design. And so if you ever have um, a more complex design, say a two level design or something with scoring, you have to, um, you have to ungroup them or unattach them in order to contour. So here's contour down here, the last item down here on the right hand side. And just so you can see, it brings up all three pieces that we want. So we want to separate this into three different pieces. So let's start. We want the big one first. So we're going to make the small one and the medium one disappear. We go back and here is the big one. And on this one, we do contour. We're gonna make the big one and the medium one disappear. And we're gonna keep that 
small one. Oops, it didn't work. So let's go back to contour and we can either do it on the side or on the image and this should work. Okay, so now we have two. Now this one, we're going to contour out the big one and the small one. I'm going to keep the medium one and let's see, I'm going to keep the medium one and contour out the big one. All right, so now these images are, are flowing free. We can ch also change their colors just slightly so they'll appear on a separate color mat, um, which is kind of what I did with mine. And you can just choose. It doesn't have to be the color you're actually going to cut it in, but um, rather just something that differentiates it as separate, okay? And then what we're going to do is let me move this to the front and to front. Okay, and then we're going to cut it out in three shades of, of pumpkin. And believe me, there does exist a number of shades of pumpkin. And by the way, you don't have to do this. If you want to ink, ink. I don't care. But uh, for me, this is how I do it, okay? So um, we're also going to use those pop dots. Yeah, it, it's contour is a great feature. I don't know that everybody uses it. Now, um, Okay, so now we're ready to cut. And we're, we can use our quadrant style for this because these, these are small pieces. So just so that people, in case you're just tuning in, what does the quadrant style mean? I'm gonna show you. So once we have all of our pieces the way we want it, we're gonna hit make it. Now this one is a pretty big image. It's gonna take up a whole sheet of eight and a half by 11. If you don't know me, also, I like to cut things out in twos, usually in twos. And the reason why is I want to use paper. I want to use up my paper. But in this particular case, I want to show you the quadrant technique. Um, and that is going to be for all these little pieces, okay? So I have, what I have is seven different mats. Now I need this mat to be its own mat. So we're going to keep that one. But I can change and move these other pieces, say this this brown piece, I can move it to another mat. So we will just click on it. Now we're in the middle, we're in the preparing stage, not at the material stage, because if you've gone to mirror, you've gone too far. So you have to cancel out of it. So you have to be in that middle stage from it's on you go from the canvas to make it and here you are in preparing. So you click on the triple dot and you choose move object and up come all of your mats. Now I can choose say for instance, this mat and don't be afraid that it changed color, okay? But here is our brown uh, part or brown like the stem and the leaf thing and we can continue to do this with our different color oranges let's go and look at some of the others um, okay green green and as you move them it actually takes though that image off of your uh, of your sheet. Now, personally, I think that I would want the brown. I'm gonna make this so that it cuts in three mats. So I'm gonna move the brown to the green and I'm gonna um, consolidate the greens, okay? So let's go here, there's two different greens and I'm gonna move this object to the green. So what I've done here is I have created three Here's our original mat, okay? Here's our mat with all of our pumpkin pieces, which we're gonna cut out in three different colors. We have no brown mat, it just shows up empty. It disappears after you go to the material section. Here's another blank mat, here's another blank mat, and here's our green mat. Now you notice that I'm putting them in very specific places. That's because when I do this method, I usually have, I look at the um, mat and I 
cut it in half and then in fours. That's what I mean by quadrant. Do you guys remember that from uh, trigonometry or calculus or whatever? There's four sections on this on this mat and these are the quadrants. So what I do, because I use scraps, I save scraps, is that I will cut it just to fit this six inch uh, quadrant and put my different colors. So a very good example of this is this um, pumpkin color. So look, I've got so many different color pumpkins, right? I really do. So what I'm going to do is cut a little piece that's six by six and stick it onto my, um, onto my mat. And I just save all my scraps. If you hang around with me long enough, you'll do the same. So what you do is you put your pumpkin, your first color pumpkin here in the first quadrant. You see that? And then I've got my second pumpkin that I'm gonna cut out here. And I'll show you how this cuts. But this is a way for you to eliminate some of those mats. And then you're not like reaching over and putting in a new mat and doing this seven times. Ugh, it's too much work, okay? So um, once we've moved all those, you'll see when we go to continue, we're down to three mats. We're down to this mat, which is our base. It's our, it's our box base. Then we're down to this mat, which is our pumpkins, and then this mat, which is a mix of greens and brown, okay? So I'm just going to cut out the pumpkins for you so you can see. So here's my mat. I've got three different color. Well, actually, I don't have three different colors. Oops, let me move this out. Um, here's a different one. So the way I do it is I keep all my scraps to the side and I just pull them out and make them fit onto my mat. Let me show you. Okay, so here's my three pieces. Six, six, six. See how that is in a quadrant? I, this one's a little bit bigger, but that's okay. Um, you don't need the, yes. Okay, so once it's in DS, I no longer need the files. Um, I keep them just in case, and I do put them on my uh, computer hard drive and I organize them and I can show you how to do that, folks. Um, so, all right, so let's go ahead and we're gonna choose a material which is medium cardstock, and I'm just going to cut that middle, the, the pumpkin colored one, making sure my pieces are all really good stuck on there and I am going to cut out, now I have saved myself the extra two mats that it's going to take to cut this out. And it's gonna cut out each individual one. I'm gonna be using scraps and I'm gonna be saving my, um, saving time as well. So this is kind of a way to trick out the system. And what's really cool is, even though the color changed um, so that it was all the same color on the mat. It doesn't change your original SVG color. So if you happen to do this because you're just trying to save some space um, when you're cutting out, it won't change your original file. That's what I really like um, about it. So now, oops, I made a mistake and I want to show it to you because we all love mistakes, don't we? Okay, so here's my first piece. There's my second piece. But look, there's my other piece and it's cut in half because I didn't put this on. I did not move my small piece to the six quadrant. I should have moved it, okay? So now you know, you need to keep it where you have your paper, okay? That's okay because I already cut this out. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to put it together. But I just wanna show you oh, how to make them and how to make it easier when you're cutting. You don't have to, I mean, some files, man, are like 15 or 16 cuts, and it's like, I don't wanna have to put this teeny tiny piece of paper on a mat. Um, I just want to have one mat that does it, you know, does four or some, you can do more than four, but you have to be very careful about where you place your paper. Okay. 
So this requires something called, at least the way I do it, requires something called foam dots. I finally got the real name of it. It's called adhesive foam dots. This is another one that I bought. It doesn't say where I bought it, but I'm pretty, the Studio G, I think it's Joann's. I, it might be Michael's, but um, so I buy these things. Clearly, I buy a lot of them because I like 3D um, in my projects. So what they are, are, these little dots that are cut out of a foam sheet. There's adhesive on both sides, but there's a little covering on it. And you pop them out. That's why I call them pop dots. But you pop them out and they have adhesive on both sides. You see that? And then you use them on the back of your piece to give it lift and to make your eye think that it's 3D. So I'm going to show you how to put that together. But we need those. And then as I was cutting this out, I thought, you know, I think I have, <laughs> this is a joke, because I have a lot of uh, fall paper, but I'm just joking. But this one here is um, from Cricut. It's called Woodland Whimsy. It was on sale. I think I got it for two bucks. I don't know that it's available anymore. But um, if you do have it kicking around, it's really kind of cute. And I used it for the actual box. So I'm going to show you how to put together the first. Well, let's do the box. So the box is cut, actually cut three of them. Um, so here's the box. I like the double sided paper just because you are going to see kind of the inside there. So I, I kind of like that. And so what you're going to do, you don't have to use double sided paper clearly, or if you solid, it will be the same color, but you're going to create um, the box by folding over at all of these score lines, okay? And then these tabs are where we're going to connect the sides. So we're folding those, okay? There we go. And it's the same thing with the solid. It's the same thing, but I'll, I'll have, you, have you see it so you can see what it looks like for solid. Folding up the tabs like this. One, two, three, four. Now we're going to glue. Um, I use this glue, this comes up all the time. So this is called Art Glitter Glue. If you want to find it and haven't been able to find it, there will be a link in the description of this video um, to a place called Create for Less, but you do not need to purchase it there, nor do you need this glue. I just happen to really like it. Um, it works really well with paper. So I'm gonna start with one tab, and I'm going to make sure that that tab is really up against the side. See that? Oh, my glue's already stuck, okay? And then I'm going to put glue on this tab on the same side, and I'll tell you why. And I'm going to position it this way. And then I'm going to put my box down here so that I can hold it. Because I want a perfectly square box. See that? And then I can do the same here. Start with this tab. Put it there. Because we want it to stick all the way, not just at the one part that you're holding. So by having it on there and sort of moving your finger inside, it's holding that, that piece together, you see? And then the last piece, you have to kind of maneuver a little bit, flip it over, and boom, your box is done. Now, the great thing about uh, that I found out about Dreaming Tree Box, uh, Dreaming Tree Files, is that sometimes you can take like pieces of them and use them for something entirely different. For example, they had a beautiful peony gift box in the spring, and I loved the box because it was kind of like a hexagon shape. But I didn't. I wanted to give it to a man, so I just. 
uh, used the box part and took the peony off the top and just gave a box that was a really pretty box that was kind of more masculine looking, okay? Um, yeah, but Don, you've been visiting family. So, I mean, like this little thing is kind of cool. You might find another reason for it. But for this case, we're going to just show you the, the pumpkin. So here's our pumpkin. I've cut out several. These are all the other pieces too. Let's put those aside for now. So here's our pumpkin. And I have three different colors. This one... Yep, this is the way it goes. And then this one. So there's our pumpkin. Now, you could do these flat if you wanted to, if you did different colors. Again, you could ink them if you wanted to, or you can do different colors with the pop dots, which is what I want to do. Um, this here is three different colors all together times two. Okay, that makes sense. And what I'm gonna use is my pop dots. Where is my opened package? Here, my open package. Okay, so I'm going to just pop a few of those out. Again, they still have the little paper on them. So we're gonna start with that middle piece, flip it over, and I'm gonna put like maybe four, just to kind of give it um, some stability. One, two, three, four. I'm gonna take off these little top pieces. Two to do. It's really starting to feel like fall up here in New England, which is everybody's favorite. Don't you bark. Okay, so here's my bottom piece. And then we're gonna put this one that has those dots, press on the dots, and you see it creates sort of an elevation, plus the colors make give it that circular look, if that makes sense to people. Same thing for this one, use a couple of dots, probably don't need four, maybe two. Now, um, here's a tip in case you didn't hear it before. Once you're done with the dots, you can cut these little things and put them on the back as well. They work just like the dots. Um, the dots are good because they're strategic, but why waste um, why waste material, right? Wait, waste not, want not, as my grandparents used to say. Um, okay, so here's my two, and I'm gonna put it, I sort of bent it a little. All right, so now I have my pumpkin. And you can make this pumpkin, you don't have to use it for this particular thing, but here's a nice pumpkin, but it needs something here. And that's where the other pieces come in. So here are the other pieces. So this has a leaf with a little squirrely little vine there. And then there's um, this brown piece that goes here onto the vine. We have the top of the pumpkin, the, the pumpkin stump or whatever you call it. What do you call that? The handle, the, I don't know, the stub, whatever you call that. But that's what we have. And we're going to place it here on the pumpkin. And then we're gonna assemble our leaf. Okay, so the leaf consists of um, a few pieces. Here is the piece on the top, here is the piece on the bottom, so it gives it a really pretty, and I use textured paper for this. If you can see, let me see, I make sure, I don't know if you can see that, but I used some textured paper, and I used two different color greens. I didn't use that, I, f I felt like it needed to be earthier, so I used that, and then here's the brown, and so I'm gonna put those on, and if you are using glue, um, you know, other people use different things, but if you're using glue, be very, very careful about how much glue you're using. It doesn't have to be this glue, but just don't go heavy on the glue. Just dot it, okay? Just dot it, and there I'm actually being a little too heavy, I think, because otherwise it kind of 
squishes out from under and it makes it look kind of unsightly. See that? So then you have to try to wipe it away and then you can see it if it dries, if you don't have the that particular glue. And you can put this on the back of this, but I'm just gonna put it here. Okay. Okay. So there's my leaf. I still have one more piece this little teeny tiny piece that's gonna go on the top of the stub. What do you call this thing, the handle? I don't know what you call it, but it goes on the top here to give that a little bit of dimension. You see that? Um, okay, so then our last thing that we need to do is to take this leaf that we've assembled and we could also use the pop stem thank you duh <laughs> silly me we could use the pop dot if we wanted to which in this case i think i will i will use it okay because i think it would be kind of fun and it would give it some dimension and we're going to adhere it to the front of the pumpkin sort of sticking out so it looks like that um vine is coming out of the stem okay i got it ladies i got it it's stem <laughs> thank you all right and then the last thing we have to do is we have to um put it on our box again also you could use pop dots i think you don't want to go crazy either so i'm just going to use a little bit of glue and attach it to my box here Make sure you're holding it good and you're lining it up. And there you have an adorable little pumpkin treat box. It was free and you made it. You know, it this is it, it took, took like what? How many pieces of of paper? Uh, it just really literally only like five pieces of paper and you made it um and it's so cute. You could put whatever you want to put in there. I don't know, even paper clips. But I think candy would be better. So what do you think? Do you like it? So cute. And look, I used that paper here. Um, and again, you can use whatever paper you want to use. This is your project. If you want to use patterns for the pumpkins, go ahead, use pattern for the pumpkin. Or if you want to turn it into a black pumpkin, who knows? You know, do whatever ever you want to do. Now, candy is a good thing to put in there. So let me just re reiterate. So this week, we are doing all free images from different designers so be prepared to be downloading at different designers this one today is from s uh, dreaming tree it's 3d svg.com i will put a link in the description so make sure you click through that link um, and you go to free files and you will see there are many free files here. You pick whatever you want. You do have to set up an account with them and you could download every single one of them if you wanted to. I would not advise that because it could get pretty, um, it could get pretty uh, busy in your downloads file like at mine, but you, you add them to your cart and then you go to checkout and you place the order and then you download from their website. Now, the reason why I'm repeating myself is because it's a little different at other people's sites, okay? So I want to point out that Dreaming Tree, which is 3D SVG, this is how they do it, but other sites do it differently, okay? So I'll show you how to do them each day. So that is the Pumpkin Treat Box isn't it adorable? And go make sure you go over there and check out Dreaming Tree, all those free files. I would have to say out of all the designers that I'm aware of, these guys have the most um, free files and the most creative free files. A lot of times it's just, you know, a few and they're not very, uh, not very, I don't know, design heavy. Maybe they're just whatever. Um, 
All right, I am, uh, I think that I am done. Hi, Nancy, learning a lot and enjoying this. Thanks for sharing a whole lot. I think a gift card with candy would be a good idea. Excellent idea, maybe for the receptionist or secretary, I don't know what they call them, but the person that um, sits at the front desk of um, of the school or something, a little fun thing, or maybe somebody in your office. I know a lot of people aren't working from aren't working from the office anymore. But wouldn't this be nice if you go to a doctor? I'm thinking, you know, if I go to my doctors, I go, I'm go. i going three times a week. Um, so I could bring this with a little bit of candies and they would like that. All right. So um, thank you so much for coming today. Um, let's see. Please join me uh, through the week as we do these classes. If you can't make them, catch them on the replay. Definitely subscribe to my YouTube channel. You'll find all of this stuff. So if I talk too fast or I didn't go over something that you needed or I did and you didn't catch it, you can always watch it on the video. And I will see you again tomorrow. I'll try to post the, the project we're going to do the night before. Okay? Thanks, everyone. Thank you for all the hearts. I love the hearts. Thank you and have a wonderful day everyone enjoy the weather